Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, we're doing a chit chat get ready with me. It's been a minute since I uploaded a video, so this is a great way to catch up. I figured it was a good way to get back into the swing of things instead of just randomly uploading again. So I have a lot I wanna chat about. I'm gonna put all the products I use in the description box below in case I'm just like chatting about stuff and I don't stop to talk about the product. That way you guys can know exactly what I'm using. I hope you had a good start so far to your new year. Honestly, January is always a pretty blah month for me. There's not a lot going on. The weather usually is really gloomy. I always forget this, like every year, I always forget how gloomy and kind of blah January is. It's literally, to me, it feels like the Monday of the year. We decided to do New Year's Eve at our house or at our apartment this year, which was the best decision ever. We've done pretty much all of the options on new year's we've done like ticketed events before we've done gone out we've gone out to dinner we've gone out to bars and honestly this was by far our favorite new year's eve we cooked dinner we stayed in our apartment which was great because theo was able to join us for some of it before his bedtime we kept it pretty chill there was only a few of us here we had drinks downstairs and just chilled watched the ball drop hung out and it was really fun. When I was thinking about what I wanted to chat about in this video, one of the things that came to mind was talking about kind of reflecting on my 2023. I look crazy right now. <laughs> uh, because 2023 for me was a very transformative year in the sense that I feel like I kind of found myself again. Obviously, you guys know if you've been watching me for a while, I've gone through a lot over the past two years. I became a mom, which changed me entirely. And my body went through so much in 2022. I felt like I wasn't in control of my body and what was happening to it and being cut open and going through treatment and all of that. I just felt like I was kind of a shell of a human. So 2023 for me, I really wanted to focus on myself to a certain extent obviously my family is very very important to me and my son comes first no matter what um, but in the sense of trying to figure out my identity and like who i am where i want to go in my career what i want to do what i find interesting what i'm excited about one of the things i made an active effort to do going into 2023 was to say yes i have always been more of an introverted person and it's honestly kind of how I even ended up online in the first place because at the end of the day, you're in your room talking to a camera. You don't really have to talk to a lot of people and it was great for me. So this last year, I really wanted to step out of my comfort zone and start saying yes and going to events and going to them alone and not with a plus one always and just really trying to get out there and meet people at brands and meet other influencers and meet other people in my job and I just always avoided that for so long that I really decided I was going to come out of my shell and just say yes and push myself socially and I think that is one of the major things that contributed to me just like feeling better overall I started to gain confidence Socially, I started to feel better about my content because I was getting out of the house and I was doing things and I started to get excited about Instagram again. I started to get excited about wanting to put content out for you guys and creating fun content. Another thing that I did more like behind closed doors but with my friends is I started to become a little bit more vulnerable and open up to them about problems and about certain things my friends have always been there through pretty much everything in my entire life but again I was always very closed off and it took a lot for me to open up to people which is why I've been pretty consistent with my friends for so long because when I finally like get to a place where I feel super comfortable like that's it for me because I started to become more vulnerable with my friends and talk about things I was feeling and going through and just kind of processing the last two years it made me feel a lot lighter, like just overall, and I felt like this weight was lifted off my shoulders. And I just feel like a combination of me putting myself out of my comfort zone, really opening up and just 
releasing this like control that I always felt like I needed to have and just kind of living made such a difference for me and yeah I really wanted to share it with you guys because some of the most commented things on my Instagram is just talking about how you know I have this new energy and I and I you know I'm glowing differently and I really feel like it's just stemmed from me feeling a bit freer uh, from the mental cage that I was in for like two years. Another thing I did at the start of 2023 is I decided to make some health changes, as a lot of people do at the start of the new year. Uh, for me, it was, I had just finished the last of my treatment. I got the clear bill of health from my doctors and I just felt like I wanted to make some lifestyle changes. So those being, I started Pilates, which was so great for not only my mental health, but it helped a lot with just my overall appearance, uh, which was great. I felt like I wasn't able to work out for like two years. I also started eating better and drinking less. The classics, but it really does make a difference. However, that does lead me into the next thing I wanted to talk about, and that is my weight, weight loss in general. And I say that because there's a lot to it, but I've been wanting to talk about this in a video because I've mentioned it in a few Instagram comments, but I want to talk about just my appearance change over the past couple years because it's probably one of the most commented things over the summer that I got asked a lot about. This topic can be very sensitive about weight loss in general, so I don't want to misspeak, but I also want to be very transparent with you uh, and really break down but not blabber on about it, but just be very clear with my situation. I had a baby in 2021, June of 2021. I was diagnosed with breast cancer of March in March of 2022. Uh, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, the treatment plan for me was to go through a double mastectomy with reconstruction and then also uh, go through four rounds of chemotherapy. So you guys know this, I've talked about this before, but essentially I got my reconstruction, which is why my boobs look the way that they do. They're not typical postpartum boobs. Uh, when I breastfed, my boobs looked very, very different at the end of it uh, than they do now because my boobs are not real. <laughs> and I think you guys all know that. Uh, so when I started chemotherapy, I honestly didn't really know what to expect, uh, but there are a lot of side effects with chemotherapy, one of them being swelling. You can swell throughout your entire body, but for me, which happened to me, but uh, specifically the steroids I had to take during chemo uh, made my face swell up. I already have a pretty round face in general, but overall my whole body kind of just puffed out a little bit. Uh, it's what happens. She, my doctors warned me about it before I started taking the medication. It was just a side effect that happened. So I finished treatment in October or end of September of 2022 and you know then I went through the holidays new year 2023 I said I'm gonna make some changes Pilates eating better drinking less and I went off of my medication all of that made me swell down made me lose some weight I want to mention the chemo stuff because that's why I feel like it was very drastic and very quick uh, another thing that made it quick which some of you know is surgery. So in April of 2023, I went in for another breast surgery. Breast reconstruction after breast cancer is a very tedious process. It's not like a normal breast augmentation or boob job or whatever you want to call it. It's very different. When you get a mastectomy, they take your entire boob. They take your breast tissue. They take all of it. There's nothing there to cushion the implant. What they do need to cushion the implant to make it look a little bit more natural, to give it that natural somewhat of a droop and just like look natural up here and not like you know just like an implant where you could see it is they use fat and this is very important because i would get a lot of comments over the summer when i would post bikini pictures and moms would be like what did you do for postpartum weight loss i need to know your tips and tricks and 
I was very honest and I said, I don't have any tips and tricks. I had surgery. He, my surgeon took fat from my lower belly and my inner thighs and put it around my implant to cushion it and make my boobs look a little bit more natural or as natural as they can look. So it's very important I mention that because that is why I don't have a mom pouch or whatever people call it when you give birth and your body looks different at the end of it, which is very, very normal. It's why my boobs don't sag because my I did have saggy boobs before I got a mastectomy. Uh, because that's what happens after breastfeeding and everybody's body is so different postpartum so it's like such a touchy subject and I don't want to mislead any moms out there which is why I've always been very open he took fat from my lower belly and put it in my boobs and that's why I don't have that that's why my stomach is flatter than it would have been if I would be two two years postpartum right now I'm very happy that I was able to find a lot of the positives with my situation and that I feel comfortable and confident to wear what I do and post on Instagram. I feel very lucky uh, about that because reconstruction after breast cancer can look different for everybody and I'm just grateful that I feel good in my skin. Uh, however, I just want you all to know that no matter what your body looks like postpartum, it's perfect and it's created life and I think that that is really important. I understand the stress of, you know, having something so drastically changed to you. Trust me, I get it and it's very scary. I would take my postpartum body pre-cancer 10 times out of 10 to not have had cancer. Trust me. What's next? Let's talk about balancing marriage, social life, after becoming a parent. As a couple, Patrick and I feel like we've lived many lives. <laughs> uh, we, we got married at the end of 2019, so our first year of marriage. We all know what happened in 2020. I think the biggest thing we've learned over the past three years going through the world shutting down, becoming new parents, and battling a very scary disease is we have to communicate very, very well. I think one of the things I've been telling my friends lately is I was, Patrick and I have been together since we were in our early 20s. We are now in our early 30s. For us, I think realizing our love languages have changed. When we were 21, our love languages were very different from when we are now 31. The love language that we both have to focus on the most is quality time. We both take care of Theo full-time while also being full-time working parents. We don't have a nanny, we don't take him to daycare. Our time alone is very limited. And when I mean alone, I mean just Patrick and I. In 2023, I definitely pulled back on sharing Theo and sharing Patrick on my social media just to keep that part of my life a little bit more sacred, I guess you could say. When Patrick and I have a date night, which is, you know, here and there, or we're able to spend time just us two, I'm not talking about when we go out with our friends or we have people over here. I'm talking about when it's just us two, we're able to go have a nice meal, or even at the end of the night, even if we're, you know, we put Theo down for bed, we spend time together and we just are off our phones. Um, we're not taking pictures, we're not sharing it with the world, uh, because before Theo, we had so much time to spend time with each other, but also share that with the internet, which was so fun for us. But now we've really realized the value of taking a second to just chill out and be off your phones and not everything needs to be documented and making sure that I prioritize that separate space for my family. I've been on the internet long enough to see the ups and downs that family vloggers go through and I don't want to be a statistic. I don't want to be, you know, something that my son has to, you know, worry about 
all of his problems and all of his stuff being aired out on the internet i've said this when i was pregnant i you know he's a part of my life patrick's a part of my life but i want my online life to be very much you know focused on fashion and food and you know vlogs here and there or sharing my friends and family on instagram here and there but not the main sole focus so that's enough about reflecting on 2023. 2024, I am so excited for. I know everybody says that at the beginning of the year, but that's a good thing, right? Everyone should be excited for the new year. This will be our last year in New York. In fact, I don't even think we'll finish out the year here. We will be moving this year, and I'm very, very excited about it. Of course, it feels bittersweet, but we are very ready to relocate. Patrick and I really wanna buy a house and get Theo set up more for, you know, a bit more consistency and meaning school, meaning the friends that he has. We don't want to bop around too much. So that is our 2024 plan. Whether or not we buy a house this year or next year, we will be relocating out of New York this year. I hope you guys enjoyed this little chit chat, get ready with me. I love making these, especially if I haven't uploaded in a while because they're just like a fun way to catch up. Uh, like I had mentioned, I'm going to put all of the products I use in the description box below. Um, what else? What else? I asked you guys on Instagram what you wanted to see from me, like content wise, and YouTube, YouTube, YouTube was the vast majority of you. So I think YouTube is back. It's so crazy the way social media moves, but I'm down to bring some more consistency to my YouTube channel. So uh, I really hope and I'm excited that you guys are looking forward to more content on here from me. And yeah, I will see you all in my next video. Bye.